Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about decorating your kitchen with fall decor. I have six beautiful DIYs to show you and they all come from Dollar Tree. This is also part of an amazing collaboration. I am excited to tell you about that later in the video. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you like anything that you see in today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I love that Dollar Tree is starting to carry these cutting board signs. I love making them over. They are cute the way they are, but it is always fun to kind of make them match your decor and customize them a little bit. So I'm just flipping this one over and I'm just using my heat gun and I'm just using this to heat up that sticker on the back because I'm going to make the back the front. I'm just going to cover it in my base color of paint. I'm choosing just to do plaster from Waverly's chalk paint and I just give it two or three coats to make sure that it is covered how I would like it. And I want to put some orange stripes on the bottom of this. I thought that would be really cute for fall. These will all take you from fall right into Thanksgiving so you can leave them, leave them up all through the season. And I'm just taking some pumpkin color chalk paint and I am just using my little stencil uh, tool here. This is just one of those little packages you get at the Dollar Tree, these little foam brushes here, um, the circular size. And I'm just pouncing up and down with a little bit of paint on there and just making sure that I don't overdo it with the paint and do a couple of coats. And you can see that there is no bleed through at all. Once that's dry, I'll stick on another paint, uh, piece of tape just a little bit lower and then I'm just making a little ticking stripe here. I thought it would be cute to kind of have two littler stripes below that main stripe. So I just kind of eyeball the size. If you're someone who likes to measure and be perfect and exact, go ahead and measure. I just kind of eyeballed it. I figured that it's going to be sitting up in my china hutch or in my cupboard. It'll probably have some things in front of it. So if they weren't quite even, it was okay, but I think for eyeballing it, it ends up pretty good. I found these darling little cookie cutters at Dollar Tree. I don't make cookies a whole lot, so I bought these with the pure intent to decorate with them. So I'm going to use them on this cutting board here, but I realized I need to put some craft paper on the back, which was the front of the sign. This has some glitter on it. You can try and sand it off and everything if you want. I found that it's easier. I just use Elmer's school glue, which you guys, if you've watched me before, know that I'm obsessed with that stuff. I use it all the time. And then I just do some hot glue around the edge and I'll take my brayer and just kind of go over while that glue is still pliable. That helps the sign stick all over and it's not going to come off or curl up or anything. And then I just am taking my little emery board here and I go around the edges. This is sped up. It is a slow motion that I do, but you just want to uh, sand away from the back of the cutting board. That's going to give you a nice crisp line. Once I get that sanded away, then I'll kind of go over the side of it um, to make sure that all of that comes off. So now I'm just taking my cookie cutters here and I'm just tying some twine to them so I can dangle them from the cutting board. You can see that I added some jute twine at the top there. Don't worry, I end up removing that because of how I wanna stick these on. Uh, I'm realizing now that I want to, there's not really a way for me to stick the twine from these tied together and I just stagger them as you can see here. But there's not really a way for me to slide that up through. I tied it too tight and so I just remove that from the back of it and then I'm just going to decide where I want those to hang from and I'm going to tie off that twine there and then I'm just going to hot glue this on the sign. You'll see exactly how I do that here. Just trim the top of that little twine off and then I can go back and wrap the jute twine around the top of my cutting board here on the handle. And you can use ribbon, you can use twine, you can use nautical rope, whatever you would like. And I just tie that off in the back and then I just cut it fairly close. If you wanna add a little bit of hot glue to make sure it's not going to come undone, that's fine. And that just allows these cookie cutters to kind of hang down here as a little decoration on this. I thought those were really cute. I felt like it needed a little something extra, so I'm going to make a scrap bow. So I'm just taking various ribbons from the Dollar Tree's fall line. Now that gingham check ribbon, I do believe I got at Hobby Lobby. I have not been lucky enough to find the black and white that they have at Dollar Tree. So definitely keep your eye out for that. I've, I've gotten like yellow and white and red and white, but I've never gotten them black and white. And then I also add just a little strand of pitberry on here. So that way I can kind of twirl it up like some pumpkin vines once I get that on. So I kind of cut it down to size. I'm just cutting all of the ribbons just a little bit at an angle. You can dovetail them. However you want to do a ribbon on this is great. And then 
for the center of it, I had just tied it off with twine. I'm just taking that uh, orange gingham there and I am just taking it and putting it over the edge and gluing it in the back. So that just kind of makes it have a nice little center there. And then I just use hot glue to glue that on the top there and you can see I missed a couple strands. So I just go back in and kind of cut those up. Apparently I forgot to show you where I just used a pencil and I just twirled that pit berry around it so that way it came up with a little curly cue on those. And then I'm just tying the little handle on the top. Now you could spray some water on this. It will help it lie a little bit more flat because sometimes your twine gets kind of rolled up in the roll there. But look at how cute this looks. Of course it's not food safe. It's just a sign from Dollar Tree that we made into our own custom sign. It's going to be darling to kind of bring that fall feel into your kitchen. I am so excited and so honored to be a part of this collaboration. I just love all of these ladies. They are all so talented. So today I am joining in with Linda from Faith Chick 777 DIY by Design. Also Lisa from Crafting My Best Life with Lisa Marie and Sandra from The Shawowans Nest. Guys, these creators are amazing. If you have never met any of them or watched any of their videos, today is your lucky day. Down in my description box, there is going to be a playlist link. I will pin it in my comments as well. And I will leave a link to all of these ladies' videos and channels in my description box so you can easily find them. Definitely go check them out and say hi. If you're new or coming from the playlist, well, Welcome. I would love to become crafting BFFs. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we can craft together here on YouTube every week. And if you are returning or have been here before, it is great to have you back. Let's go make some more DIYs. I made a fatal error and did not film this before of this muffin tin, but it did come from Dollar Tree and you guys have all seen muffin tins before. So I just took it into my garage and I used this paint. It was kind of, it's like a satin amber uh, and I really did like it. It turned out really good. It was a little bit more dull than a traditional pumpkin, which I liked. It's not so bright in your face orange. And after it dried, it took about three coats to get the coverage I wanted. I'm just taking just a little, this is one of the brushes from Dollar Tree, the stencil brushes. And I I'm just taking some white chalk paint that I watered down and I am just dipping it in that and I brush the excess off so I don't get huge drops and then I'm just like flicking it with my finger to kind of give it that speckled look. I think that's kind of a fun cute look. Now of course this is not food safe in any way so don't think that it is and I'll show you kind of how it won't get mixed up with your food safe ones but again I'm just going over the front and the back here just to kind of give it that coverage that I want. So I'm taking some ribbon and I am going to put ribbon through the little hole on the side and I just bend my ribbon in half and then stick it uh, from the front of the pan. You can kind of see it's easier to see than explain this down. So it makes a loop in the back and then I will just feed that ribbon through uh, the loop. I should have left it a little bit longer. It would have been easier and then trimmed it down. Um, but however you want to do that. But this way, in case you happen to have an orange pan that looks similar to this and you don't want to get you know, mixed up with your food safe items or whatever. I mean, nobody's going to come and think, oh, there's ribbon on this. I can put it in the oven. So hopefully that helps. But I just thought it looked cute on here also. Um, I This would be really cute to sit out with some like little Halloween candy that's wrapped in it like you know some little Kit Kats or Reese's or something like that I thought would be super cute kind of in this for like a little tray display but it's just kind of fun I um, I have a couple of these that I use for different seasons to kind of in my china hutch just have as a little you know it's a kitchen item and it's just kind of fun to decorate it and have it look you know kind of festive for the season and then I'm just using my lighter tool here just to kind of sear the edge of those ribbons so that way they don't fray at all. And then you can see those little pumpkins sit really cute in it. I just think this turns out really cute. It's something that's kind of fun and it just kind of adds that like festive flair to your kitchen for the holiday. And you can do this with any color of paint for any season. This is kind of a fun little hack. Dollar Tree has all sorts of different charger plates here. These are of course not food safe. You're just using them to place other plates on if you do like a fancy table setting or something and they're fun to use in your china hutch. But I am just going to use this to make a little decorative plate out of. So I found these cute little pie pieces at Dollar Tree. Uh, they're just kind of like, I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do with them. They have this little tag to hang them on something. So maybe just to hang off of a cute little knob or something like that. But I'm taking this little 
little slice of pie here and I thought it would be really cute. Now I have never seen these gold chargers at Dollar Tree before so I don't know if this is something new or I've just missed them before but I thought that was a really cute color for fall and I'm just using some hot glue on the back of that little pumpkin pie piece and this will be so cute to use as a decorative piece in your china hut or just on a little plate rack or something and it is so simple and takes like no time at all. I have never seen these at Dollar Tree before, but this is a cute little like door hanger here. It's got the cute little beaded uh, tassel thing on it and then these the leaf on there. Now they are monogrammed and I don't need the letter S, but sometimes when you find these, they only have like random letters that you don't need. So I'm just using some spackle on the back of it to cover that up and then I'm just going to let that dry and then I paint it with some white paint. Now you could paint this whatever color you wanted. Honestly, if you wanted to cut out some scrapbook paper to do on there that might even be an easier process than, than what I'm doing and then you can kind of make it as colorful or however you want but I just paint both sides of that white and I have these little rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and I'm trying to decide where to place it to get like the most on there and I end up deciding to kind of cut them and place them custom like where I want them so that way I can get as many as I want and the different colors but these rub-on transfers are so cool if you've never seen me use them before you just lay them down on your item and you're just using like a popsicle stick or craft stick and you're just kind of um, putting quite a bit of pressure on there just to rub it from that plastic onto your surface and if you kind of lift it up a little bit and you can kind of see like oh that didn't you can see I place it back down and then I know that I need to like rub a little bit more on an area and so you can make sure that you get it all now this one I was putting some of them off so it looked like it was like a seamless pattern or something and so you can kind of see that I go over the edge with some of them so that's up to you if you want to do something like that that's why I, I said maybe scrapbook paper would work really good for this too if you can't find these rub-on transfers but I love these pumpkins I loved kind of the muted color and I love if you've watched my videos for fall you know that I've been using like the plaster color the pumpkin color and the sage color from Waverly's chalk paint or sage or moss or maybe I've been using both but anyways it's kind of a muted green color not so like in your face but I'm just taking some Mod Podge and I go over to seal that design in because they will scratch off and then just taking some antique wax this is totally optional but it kind of gives a little bit of a distress to it and I like the defined edge on it so that's a matter of personal preference but I do kind of uh, rub the excess off on the front of that so it on my leaf there so that way it does kind of look distressed too and then I even go over the beads just a little bit and then on the back side that's where the letter was you can't even see where that S was I do the same thing I think this just turns out really cute. It's something cute to have hanging from a wreath. I, if you have like a ladder that you put your dish towels on or something, it would be really cute hanging on those or even off of like a, a door to a china hutch or pantry or something. I just think this turns out really cute. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. I'm so excited for this project. For the longest time, I could not find tumbling tower blocks at my Dollar Tree. And so now that I have found them, I'm loving making so many different projects with them. So I'm just going to make a little ladder to go on your cupboard so you can hang your dish towels from it, maybe add a little wreath or something to it to kind of bring different seasons in. I thought it would be perfect for this fall video. Now I'll tell you what I did. You can measure and do what works best for your kitchen. I did nine tumbling tower blocks on each side and then I did four through the middle to have it be a little bit wider like that. That's the size that I found best, worked best with the size of my, like the space between my counter and my cupboards and being able to hang the dish towels off of them. And then you can also kind of measure the length of dish towels you want for how you'll kind of see where I put my, the rungs on the ladder here uh, when I get to that point um, that you wanna make sure sure that your dish towel can hang off of it and not have to like droop down on the cupboard or anything like that. 
So I'm just using a combination of wood glue and hot glue. And this honestly is what takes the longest part of this is just gluing these, making sure that you get them as straight as possible. I'm using um, like a big stir paint stir stick to kind of help myself keep that line straight. And I just start with doing those two side pieces of the ladder and then I go in and just do the same thing to get the rungs of the ladder done. After the glue has dried on these, you can take them. I took mine out and sanded them with my electric sander to kind of give them a more even look just because the tumbling tower blocks are not all made equal. If you've ever worked with them, you know that they don't go completely straight because they're not all cut the exact same for some weird reason. Anyway, so you can kind of see here, I'm just playing around with how I want uh, my rungs to be, how high I want. And, and again, you can kind of tailor it to your needs or whatnot. Now, if I was to do this, I would do this different. I would do glue down all down one side and all the other instead of doing them one rung at a time. I don't know, once I started this process, I kind of had to stick with it though. <laughs> but um, do it on one side of your ladder and glue all three rungs on that side and then you can glue that other side on. That it honestly just makes more sense to do it that way. I don't know why I did it this way. Um, and then I have these really cool clamps right here that you can kind of squeeze on to make sure that you're getting a really good connection. I can link those down in my description box. I usually get asked about those, they are awesome. But you can just find them at your hardware store. So I put my middle one a little bit higher. I just have learned that when I hang dish towels off of them, I don't want them to droop on the counter or anything. And sometimes I want to be able to see a little bit of that bottom rung through when I hang my dish towels, like it'll kind of show through a little bit on the side or something. So that's why they're not completely even. So that's a matter of personal preference. That's just how I like my towels to hang on them. And now I'm just taking some antiquing wax. And this is fairly simple. You guys have seen me do this a million times. I just use a baby wipe and I use it with the antiquing wax and then you can use folk art waverly and just rub it on and then it, you can kind of rub the excess off to give it a stain you can also paint this whatever color you could leave it natural if you wanted i did make one of these out of some square dowels and if you want i can put that video down in my description box the link down there so check for that if you want to see how to make it not out of the tumbling tower blocks but do it with square dowels and then it sometimes it's easier in between these spaces to use a brush to brush on the antiquing wax and then i still go in with a baby wipe and wipe off the excess. And you just do this all over the ladder until you get the desired coverage that you want. I think this turns out darling. I feel like that wood glue helps give it that really sturdiness that it needs. It's going to be so cute and you can kind of see that bottom rung peeking out there. And this will be so fun to use for different seasons. It's not just fall, but again, I just thought it would be fun to decorate for fall. But what do you guys think of this? Let me know down in the comments. I found this darling little baking dish at Dollar Tree, and I'm not much of a baker to be honest, but I thought it would be darling for uh, using for fall decor. And so I'm just taking some Spanish moss to place in there. You can hot glue it in, you can just set it in, whatever you would like to do on this. I just thought it would be kind of fun to have this sitting in with my china hutch with some of the little dishes, bringing just the, that feel of fall with the cute little baking dish. And now these little pumpkins came from Dollar Tree and they are on a clip. Uh, I know a lot of YouTubers have used these for um, other things and they'll take the clip clip off, but I thought it would be kind of nice to be able to clip them into that Spanish moss rather than having to use a ton of glue. That way I can take them off. I can do, do it again. I could change out uh, if I wanted to put something different in this little baking dish. Um, it does say on this baking dish though that it's like dishwasher and microwavable safe and stuff. So it looks like it's totally food safe if you want to use it for that. But if you just want a cute little dish to put some pumpkins in and have it be a cute little vignette, I think that this is perfect. I think it turns out really cute and it's something that is so simple and easy. What what do you guys think of this one? I had so much fun coming up with all of these different items to decorate my kitchen with. Do you guys decorate your kitchens for different seasons? I think it's always kind of fun to find some different items that are traditionally kitchen items and make them fun and kind of fit in for different holidays. So if this is something that you like, I will do a couple more for different holidays. I can kind of keep that trend going and come up with some different things to do. So let me know down in the comments if you do like the kitchen ideas. And also remember to check out that playlist link down in my description box. 
as well as the channels to the other ladies. Oh my gosh, they are so talented. You guys need to go check out their videos and see what fall creations that they made for you. As always, I want you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.